Tracking a record-breaking storm in the Sacramento area. More rain and snow is expected to sweep through today. You can see right here on live look at our tower camera here in Sacramento. Yeah, it's still looking dreary outside. Happening now, 50 is shut down from Fred's Place to Myers. Now, this is all due to a late night rock slide and snow. You can see it right there. It's a snowy mess. This after a day of historic rain with street flooding, power outages, and down trees across the area. You better believe we have team coverage this morning. ABC 10's Bria Love is live at a Sacramento high school that is now shut down because of flooding. Zach Fuentes is in Citrus Heights tracking more flooding. And meteorologist Carly Gomez is tracking the snow in the mountains. You can see it right there coming down. Of course, we start with Rob Carl, Mark Rain, snow, rock signs. We have it all just like you told us we would. What can we expect for the rest of the day? Brittany, what we all went through was historic. And, you know, you hear this word thrown around, but it's really important to understand that people have been living in this area and recording the weather for a very long time since the gold rush. And we hit a number that we have not hit ever uh, in the 24 hours. And that is the first thing that I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, we hit a brand new record in Sacramento. Uh, 5.44 inches of rain within 24 hours. It's never happened before since we've been keeping records. Same thing with Blue Canyon, more than 10 inches of rain in October, let alone, and for also the executive airport. So these are some huge numbers. Just to understand, we are still adding to the totals in the foothills, but the high Sierra has switched over to snow. Now we are seeing rapidly clearing skies in places like Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto, because the main line is now moving into Southern California. So it's great for them spreading out some of this um, well needed moisture uh, around to other places. But really the story is gonna change later on today. We've got some instability. And what that means is even though we're seeing a little bit of a breeze later on today, we are gonna be looking at all sorts of changes uh, in the afternoon, clouds and maybe even a few thunderstorms. Later on, I'll be talking about the huge changes for Lake Orville hitting 650 feet. It's come up more than 20 feet, adding water that the whole state needs. It's been a huge game changer for that lake and really for the state. I'll talk much more about this later on. For now, back to you. Thank you for always updating us, especially this past weekend. Well, a severe storm has caused flooding and power outages in our area. Jesuit High School in Sacramento is now closed. ABC 10's Bria Love, she joins us. I know you're on scene. So how bad is the flooding at the all boys school and how long do they think it will be shut down for? Well, Brittany, I'll kind of explain the situation to you, but I want you to take a look at the buildings this morning. So if you look through those rooms, you'll see there's no students, no teachers, no faculty. It's just dark in there because, as you said, they do not have power. They're closed today. Now, what happened was that historic rainfall, it actually caused flooding in some of the basements of some of the campus buildings here and those specific buildings that it caused flooding into actually is what took away the power, took away the phones, took away email and took away internet. And without those things, you can't really have a classroom in operation. So we did talk to the principal today. He says it's all about keeping the students safe. The safety of our students is always a priority. Not having those critical systems to run a school day uh, led us to decide that this was a day to close the campus, uh, pivot to some online resources that we have so we can repair the damaged systems to return to school tomorrow. It's good that we have virtual learning for times like this, but the good news is here. Maintenance is here. We just talked to the principal on campus. As you saw, they are working on it. They expect everything to be back up and running tomorrow. But in the meantime, as always, we'll keep you updated if something is to change. Brittany. Yeah, I'm sure the kids are happy to get a break, but it does look better behind you. So thank you so much for your update. You never know what's going to happen in this storm. Well, happening in Citrus Heights, flooding also causing problems. ABC 10 Zach Fuentes spoke with one man stranded in the storm thanks to flooding. Now this property is in Citrus Heights, not too far away from Sunrise Boulevard. And look, right now the driveway is dry, relatively speaking, but earlier this morning and late last night, that was not the case. In fact, the homeowners were stranded. They could not get out. This is how Brian Owen's driveway looked after seven this morning. This is the same area just yesterday when water from the nearby Cripple Creek blasted through the driveway, stranding Brian and three others who live there until two Monday morning. It's a little scary when you don't have access to um, emergency services if needed and 
and things like that. Brian says he's lived at the property for eight years. The problem with rain and the driveway flooding started about three years ago. He suspects that work done on the land next to him has altered the course of the water runoff. Um, they've brought in dump truck after dump truck of uh, dirt here, and I've reported it to the Environmental Protection Agency and to the city uh, of Citrus Heights and um, just trying to prevent what happened to us last night. We were literally stranded here all night long with no way to get in or out. Cripple Creek helps drain the northern part of Citrus Heights. We were live along another portion of it earlier Monday morning, showing just how high the water levels are and how strong the current was. It's the same creek that runs through Brian's property, adding to its beauty, but when met with storm runoff, also becoming a costly headache. Not only does it flood it, but thousands of dollars worth of rock that we come and put in here to make this passable gets washed off with each rain. Right now, Brian says he's going to continue to look for solutions and continue his conversations with the city of Citrus Heights and the Environmental Protection Agency. Yeah, that looks like a mess. Thank you so much for your update. We'll take a look at your screen. This is video of flooding from Arcade Creek at Winding Way in Sacramento. County officials say the creek reached flood stage meaning it's approaching overflow levels. You can see it right there. The area near the creek is also closed. Well, we've already seen plenty of crashes because of this wet weather. Take a look at your screen. Overnight, a car crashed into a back of a Caltrans truck in North Sacramento. Police also say two cars crashed at 19th and Capitol, one hitting a light pole, the other car slamming into a state building. Then a car took out a power pole along Watt Avenue. Take a look at this. The driver apparently lost control of the car. The roadway was flooded in the area, which is a good reminder from your traffic team to take it nice and slow, especially when the roads are a wet mess. As always, your weather and traffic team looking out for you, especially in severe weather. Make sure to download our ABC 10 app for all your weather and traffic updates. You can track the storm along with us, get hourly forecasts, and of course, update your storm pictures as well. Well, we're also tracking power outages across our area this morning. PG&E says tens of thousands of customers are in the dark. So take a look at your map at the outage map. Overnight, PG&E said 380,000 customers lost power because of the storm, but many thankfully got their power back on. So far, thousands, though, are still in the dark right now. Most of the outages are in the Bay Area. From flooding roads to downed tree limbs, homeless people are in the midst of it all. This video is being shared by Sacramento lawyer Mark Reichel. It shows water from US 50 in downtown Sacramento being over the city's safeguard site. Several people are set up there. Reichel says they're not allowed to move under the freeway. Well, thousands of people in the Sacramento area are experiencing homelessness. ABC 10 is standing for you and has been pressing officials for the past week about how they help, how they plan to help those without shelter be safe during this storm. Well, Sacramento County has additional warming shelters and centers up and running this morning. Now there's actually one on 28th Street in the Newton Booth neighborhood and another in South Sacramento on Florin Road. Meanwhile, this is a view at Sacramento City Hall. People have sought refuge inside and outside the building. The area inside is near capacity and Sacramento's mayor shared this message. I'm really proud of the fact that we are opening up the people's building to bring people indoors. It's the right thing to do. Sacramento's homeless union is speaking out against the mayor, calling the video a photo op and says with people flooded in tents, it's simply unacceptable.